the Serial Podcast 9. I'm Ryan, and this is Serial Podcast 9. So today's episode is a little bit different because it starts with an intro. And I generally try to avoid doing intros to these because it's super awkward and I haven't had any beer. But yeah, so when we usually start an episode, Gerard, Kevin, and myself will have a quick conversation about what's been going on in the week. Uh, this one was a little bit different because it was a, turned into a very serious conversation about the state of the car scene and why there aren't cooler cars in the community or in the scene. It's probably one of our more honest conversations. It was very long and I had to cut it down quite a bit. So you're going to notice that Gerard starts the conversation by talking about Fast and Furious 9, which has nothing to do with the conversation, but it was fun. Uh, and then there's a sharp turn into why things are the way that they are. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. And here we go. Did you love the movie? Hell yeah. They fly a Fiero into the space. They do. And they somehow managed to make like a fucking 50 ton giant army fucking B train rig flip on its nose with magnets from two cars. Oh, like, oh, like over, over end. Mm-hmm. The over end flip of a semi that I think they do that in like the, the Batman movie too. Yeah, but they do. I mean, this isn't a semi, it's like an armored fucking rolling city block. <laughs> Not only that, Dom jumps out of like, I think he jumps out of that thing and then he jumps out of like some other thing. He gets rescued from like a like a fucking mine shaft. Fucking it's it's awesome. Like he's he just he's invincible. He's he's the best. So it's, it sounds like if Dominic wrote a movie. It's like, and, then, and then there's like a mine shaft, and then it goes to space, and then there's like a army block that flips over yeah, with it's, magnets. It's, and well, like, I mean the, the, the thing for me is like, why are they even driving this thing in the first place? Like all they're doing is like like, I don't know, uploading some codes to a satellite. They could do it from some, like, secret army base or some fucking... I mean, they could do it from a fucking apartment complex. Who gives a shit where the fuck they are? But they're, like... That's not a good movie, bro. They're ripping through traffic in this, like, crazy armored fucking city block thing with, like... <laughs> it's pretty sick. Uh, it's good old Fast and Furious. Sounds not great. I'm not, I can't stress this enough. How I don't want to see this movie. I mean, Ryan, come on. Like, come on. Like, it's Fast and Furious, man. I mean, if, I know what it is. It's like, it's like, it's like fucking watching a Marvel movie and thinking it's fucking real. You know what I mean? Like, because, yeah, cause, but I actually think at this point, and I've said this and you got mad, Marvel movies seem more plausible because there's actually a story of how they became superheroes. Whereas, like, this dude was just stealing VCRs and driving Honda Civics. And now... Yeah, that was, like, 20 years ago, man. People get better at shit, you know? He's a spy (laughs) and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's like if we all became spies. And then all of a sudden, because I know how to take pictures, I know how to hack a computer. That's essential. I mean, I never knew how to design parts fucking 20 years ago, so... I mean, that's not (laughs) you, like, jumping out of buildings. I mean, it's just... It's not that far off, you know? Like, I, I, I hired a guy to... I paid a guy... To draw me a fucking potato, and now I just like make like race car parts. Kind of the same thing, you know? Yeah, that's exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As Fast and the Furious, as you being a super spy, you being James Bond with no just, real training. Just stop hating, man. Just accept I'm not. it for what it is. I will never stop. Okay. If you don't, if you don't like Fast and Furious, you're not a real car guy. Is that? Well, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> that's fully not true. Oh, you're yeah. you're not a you're not a like young fucking car guy. I mean, you could be like a a road racing Porsche enthusiast and not like Fast and Furious, sure. But like, if you're into like stanced out cars and fucking loud exhaust, you should probably like Fast and Furious too. You know, they're doing two more movies. Sick! Can't wait. The next one, they're going to be fighting Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk in space because they are both have robots and they both have one half of Mars. And the Fast and Furious guys are going to have to go fight them. That'd be pretty good. I mean, it wouldn't. I hate everything about this. Um, and, then the, and then the next one, it will finally learn that it happens in the same universe as Transformers. And the all sports yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, we got to be getting then, close then to you, the Then you got to start racing. You know, you're racing your car and then it transforms. 
I feel like people out here, man, or maybe in our drift community or maybe like whatever, like nothing's really fucking cool out here, man. Like, I mean, we, you know, we have like sort of cool cars and like they're chasers and stuff, but like some of them are fucking cool. go to a Honda, a Honda show and probably find 10 cooler things easily. It's easier I mean, to have a, sh- a cool show car than is a tr- cool drift car. I think uh, there's two uh, things there's that the happen. Same fucking thing. How is it different? Because the drift car, you're using it. Yeah. I like that this is the episode. So, like, all, so you wreck your bumper 10 times a year. It's hard to have an immaculately painted bumper compared to, like, you bought the bumper five years ago and just drive around to shows and it's the same bumper. Like, it better be immaculate. Like, you yeah. better have all your ducks I mean, in it, a row. It was my criteria for a cool thing to be immaculate. Like, absolutely not. Like, it's just creativity or, like, what people are doing with their cars or, like, how but they're I, building it. You know what I mean? I, the, okay the thing is with with fucking people with chasers it's like okay it's kind of come to this thing where it's like like s chassis now are getting to that level of like hondas and vws where it's like the shit's all been done so now people are like starting to think outside the box and like build cool cars whereas like the chasers and stuff it's like a lot of these guys getting into these cars are pretty fucking basic dudes it's like chaser coilovers some sort of generic fucking japanese or jdm wheels and like I don't know, some sort of fucking basic ass arrow and like go drifting. There's nothing really fucking exciting about that. Yeah, like, but it's cool. if you were to check back on our old episodes of what we talked about, we've already said that that's like 80, like the car itself is like a 70% cool car. So they yeah, only right. have to add. And that's another, the equation right yeah, there. Yeah, that's the equation. They've added another. You were like, what would you do? You'd, you'd, get, you'd get the 100, you'd get the coils, you'd get some wheels, you'd go drifting. Like We said that. No, I that agree, was like the like, equation. I think the thing is, is that what, also you're probably dealing with is you're looking at things in your own backyard and it's very easy to shit on things in your own backyard because every yeah, car mean. scene does that what do you mean when in i say backyard like in your own scene where you live like where where you reside the scene yeah, that you yeah, actually yeah, are yeah. geographically close to you're mm-hmm. judging it but it's because it's all this you're seeing the same things over and over again because it's the drift community is the same here. It's very rare. Like if three new people enter the scene a year, then that's three new people that enter the scene. But that's not like a giant number of people. But I, you show you show the scene to people elsewhere. And it's like, oh, people really like Kevin's car. People really like that Paul's like wagon. People, you know, like those are things that people look at from the outside. Everybody thinks that the shit in their backyard sucks. It's like you talk to anyone anywhere. They're like, the roads where I live are really shitty. And it's like, you talk to the dudes in California and they're like, our roads are shitty. And it's like, yeah, but your roads are probably better than everyone else's, but everybody thinks California roads are not better. Well, who's ever has the, who has the best roads? <laughs> I don't know. Who, I don't know. Our well, roads now, are pretty yeah. good here. Like, yeah, honestly, fine, we have, but we have, we have some good ass roads. But then I people complain about them. They're like, if our roads didn't stink. And I was like, what are you talking about? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's always an, a reason, though, you know? Yeah, it's all. You can so, always find a reason. Tuba stink. Uh, <laughs> maybe the, maybe the, like, just buy it and drift it thing. Or, like, the, the like, softer me is, like, what's the word? Like, going back under a little bit. Just because, like, you start seeing so much of the same fucking whack shit. It's like, it's like, cool, we have chasers, like. That's cool, yeah. I guess. But like, but we're every all pretty much the fucking same. Like, every car community has the same percentage of cool cars as the other as other car communities. What I'm one thing I'm sort of saying too is like the level of the enthusiasts here is relatively low. Like, like if you and I were to go to Weckfest in just in fucking Seattle, the level of enthusiasts, the meet the median is higher, and the highest is much higher. Right? Yeah, I but. I would still say that there's probably so that's there's population, so there's a bigger pool to choose yeah. from. And also we're not used to seeing that, so it's all brand new when we go see it. Like that's I mean it's it, it. fucking new or old, like an like a like a BMW fucking wagon with ITBs and like I don't know, JDM wheels. It, it's it's kind of fucking cooler than like I don't know, some other but if shit you saw like, that every but I mean, yeah, exactly. If you saw that if you saw that car once a week and you know, then it might it would not be as cool anymore. If I drove but, I mean, that even car, that car even that car like, itself, eventually you'd be over that car. If it was Ryan that drove that car and I drove it to the shop like every week to be like, we're gonna edit a video, eventually you'd be like, ah, you know what? It's like cool, but 
No, but that car me. itself is still can still You'd like be very Gerard about it. I don't know how you don't see this. No, <laughs> it it can hold its own on a world stage because it's it's interesting. It's it's unique. But we it's have cars of, here that can hold their own on a world stage. Fucking name one. I don't know. Something that you guys built, I guess. I Something mean, that my Doxzilla, my original might have been close. Godzilla shit, probably. Uh, I don't know. Like, there's tons of shit that people like lose their mind over. People are always like excited to meet JJ if he's in Saskatchewan. People are like, yo, this is fucking sick. So, in the situation and what you're describing, when we go to Seattle and yeah, we're I think Saskatchewan he meant like, in that equation, uh, maybe. I mean, I don't a know. little bit. There's a bigger scene, and people spend totally. Money. It's a bigger scene because there's just more population. Yeah. And that was like, there's the same Because the minute you say you're from content. Canada, you're all one big Saskatchewan. Yeah. Like, they're like, think you live in an igloo. And they're like, what do you mean? Like, you have a modified car. Yeah. Do you have an igloo garage? Yeah. How do you drive that? Yeah, that'd be there? sick. Yeah, that would be sick. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I At the end of the day, I think that's, I don't, I don't think. <clears throat> any like so if we went to california and there was a drift scene there you think you'd be i don't think you'd be any more impressed by the california drift scene than you would i mean maybe it's just the drift scene generally i don't know I mean, like some of the shit in japan is like kind of sick you know what i mean like i don't know they just drift all sorts of fucked up shit it's kind of cool whereas like yeah, here it's like that's our answer for dudes. everything but, uh, yeah but that's a, no but that's no, but I mean, like, there's stuff in Japan that's not cool, too. Like, no, there's absolutely cool. shit in Japan that's not cool. I agree. That's what I mean. So, like, I feel that there's cool aspects okay, and not the cool coolest aspects. Drift of... car that you think exists right now, Kevin. What's the coolest drift car in North America that you, that you think? <sighs> or, or name fucking three of them. Fuck, that's a hard question and very subjective. Yeah, I mean. Because, like, I would just be like, well, I think what Chob just did to his car looks cool. So, Chob's car. But you also don't really like JZS's, and I do, you know? And No, I I could. I mean, I think, I think fucking, what, the car that we sponsored in Japan, fucking. The Macar, Macar, oh. uh, Macaroon's car. Macamon's. Macaroon's. <laughs> it's Yuhei Baba. Yeah, Yuhei's car looked fucking sick. Because it had, I mean, maybe the fact that the Vertex kit was, like, a bit generic. But the Vertex kit with the breed fenders. And I feel like when it went yellow and it had like even like those wheels weren't great, but they were just black and like I feel like it looked fucking sick, man. Like I feel like it needed like yeah, like a, a, GT a bit wing. better of a wheel and a GT wing for sure. Because like it was definitely it was like a mad rush to get it ready for Tokyo yeah. Auto Salon. But I mean that car was nuts. Like the interior was nuts. The engine, yeah, was the nuts. engine bay was nuts. Fuck, the, the car was nuts. Like we have been talking <laughs> for a while, but we haven't actually said what this. Uh, so far, this episode is about me and. I mean, you Kevin. could just do the intro at the end. Yeah, we can. When you, when you know what it's to. about. <laughs> we, so far, it's just me and Kevin trying to convince Gerard that cool cars exist everywhere. Like, okay, Gerard. okay, okay. Let me let me name some cars that like stood out in my mind from option that were, or even just recently that were like kind of sick. Like that yellow RX-7 that was like super fucking wide and yellow with like the ridiculous like Kranze wheels and like the massive fuel system in the back. Like that car will forever be embedded in my fucking head as like one of the craziest drift cars I've ever seen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, when yeah. was that car? When was that car made? When fucking, was that in- who knows? If you had that car today, it'd still be fucking ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It's more ridiculous I, than any car that I can think of right now. I don't really care for the, like like I, it's great and I like this and it's all fine and good, but like kind of like also like romanticizing everything from the past is one thing no too. but what i'm saying i'm is sure that, it's that. a cool car but like yeah you and everybody else thinks some car from option <laughs> magazine like 10 to 15 years ago is the coolest shit yo yo yo, yo the bride levin coop with the, the bn green one the green yeah. one. Like, i don't want to do an episode yeah. where you guys just talk about yeah, no, no, I, 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 cars. i'm kind of just like taking the piss on that one that is yeah. a sick car but like yeah you know I know That's there was one. Thing. It's like this is the the one thing, and I I've I've come to terms with it. I understand why we're so into Japan and all the cars and that. No, but like think about I just but, what I was saying is think of a car in the USA that would sort of be like equivalent. Like when that car came Rev out. Gasm's car is cool. Uh, I don't know. Simba's car is cool. All of Proceed. I like the Squeeze Eight Six car. The Squeeze Eight Six car. car yeah. yeah. Even that new Eight Six that they did neat, is pretty you know, sick. Like, there's a, pretty much a lot of the final bout cars are cool, but the final bout cars are yeah, all the exactly. cream of a crop from areas that probably have way more shitty cars in it than we ever see. 
one of the biggest realizations I ever had when I started traveling and especially from Saskatchewan. So you won't have this perspective as a car guy is like going to a place and realizing that, yo, what I see on the internet is only a sliver of what exists because there's a lot of garbage and I'm only seeing the best of the best of the best of the best. And when you actually start traveling and seeing that it's like, Oh, and that's when I came up with that idea is like, realistically, every scene is made up of probably the same number. It's like yeah. 5% are the top of the top. And then you have like 15% that are like really cool cars that are great. They're not like immaculate, but they're cool. And you know, whatever other percent. And then like 60% of cars are garbage. Like they're like part-timers are never going to be a thing or people, you know, like the yeah. Mazda threes and that, that is the world. And then it's like, Oh, I just don't see that because Nobody takes photos of those cars. I feel like that applies in more way. Like you could apply that to like regionally where you're like, yeah, only like 5% of the cars in that region are going to be sick. But you could also apply that to the chassis too. It's like, well, if you took every X chassis from all of the regions in North America, only 5% of those are going to be like the sickest too, you know? So it's yeah. like, yeah, no matter what you pick, there's still going to be like a finite small amount of, of ones that are actually sick. And it's part of an equation because it's like when I go to a final bout event, there's still cars that I prefer to shoot compared to other cars. And the other cars that I'm not shooting probably at a regular drift event, I would shoot. So even in my mind, I'm separating yeah. the tiers of cars, you know, or whatever connection I have to those cars. So I just like, I, I do think that we have cool cars here, but Ah, there's this fallacy and I don't really know how to explain it. My mother-in-law explained it once. It was like, if you lived in a small town and somebody there made apple pie and you thought the apple pie was really good, you'd be like, that's really good apple pie, but there's no chance that's the best apple pie in the world. The best apple pie in the world. It's not no chance. Somewhere. It's a small chance, maybe. It's a small chance. The best apple pie in the world has to be somewhere else where I'm not. Like it has to be like it has like, what are the chances? What are the small chance? What is a small sliver of a chance that I happen to live in the one town that has the best apple pie in the world? And it's like, well, know. no, because in your mind, you want to believe that it exists somewhere. And it's a journey that you have to go there. And it's like an adventure or a trek or a challenge. And I think that is kind of what we're describing when we talk about car scenes. Uh, that's a that's a ponderance. End the show with that one. Leave them scratching their noodle. Does that not make sense, or does it? I don't know. I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, I, no, don't I mean, know it, that, I agree with it. But. I mean, no, no, it's true because some, you know, somewhere, someone does have the best X chassis in the world. Yeah, the best one. What are know? the chances that I happen to do a podcast with two guys that have uh, one of some of the best understanding of suspensions for X chassis and Toyotas? Like, what are the chances? There has to be an op- There has to be someone else out in the world that has a better understanding of, of that suspension setup for that, those cars that isn't serial nine. That's the fallacy. But the truth is, is that I could be sitting here and actually doing a podcast with the two guys that have the best understanding of the suspension for those cars. I feel like I get a bit of this thing with music, first of all. Okay. So with music, it's like kind of like radio, for example, like band a comes out, has a hit song it gets played on the gets played on the radio it gets popular more people hear it more people like that band more people fucking play that song that artist has hopefully at least 10 other songs probably fucking 20 or 30 five of which could be fucking amazing too but the only song maybe one or two that you're going to hear is the one on the fucking radio so it's sort of like you're kind of like fucking people can you just maybe like research or like be a bit more into the music and listen to this guy's other shit instead of what you're being fed. And it's kind of like the same thing with cars. It's like, can you not just like maybe build a little bit of a fucking cooler chat chaser than the same thing that everyone else is building? I guess it's just like, I feel like the people could do better and I wish they would do better. I Yeah. I mean, like, look, top 40 uh, of a uh, music industry is, its own thing because you have to make that song that you just described to get people to even look at your record especially back in the day if i was going to buy a 16 dollars cd to own that own that song you better lead with your best foot forward right that's where you get like did like puff daddy getting biggie smalls to like 
uh, do like Juicy or whatever because it's. But like, I'm talking about. I don't want to do that song, but it's not, like yeah, but I got other people in there. The artists are, in my opinion, the artists are aren't the problem. The problem is the fucking sheeple. No, but the artists and the producers are making the music to say like they'll actually they would put out an album and be like. Yeah, this is all great, but you don't have a hit. I need a single that I can sell to the masses. I need that thing that gets you in the door. That's like Dancing in the Dark by Bruce Springsteen is literally a song about writing the hit to get people. Because it's like he was going to put out an album and then they're like, no, you need a hit. So he wrote Dancing in the Dark about like trying to come up with a hit. I know, but you're already thinking about it too much. Yeah, you're you're way into it, man. Yeah, you're you're like I'm just talking about <laughs> oh. fucking people that can't see past the the music. Yeah, but then use a better pass. analogy, man. Come on, that's a perfect analogy. It's not. You ask you're... people, okay? You're like like they're like oh, are the like, car are the car builders the artists or yeah? Who's the artist? Like who's who's the Diddy fucking in this people character? that are just simply listening to and regurgitating the same shit? It's like oh, you like Post Malone? Like what songs you like? I don't know, fucking. Sunflower. Party like a rock star. It's like Post Malone has a fucking bunch of good music. And like, they'll probably be like, oh yeah, like fucking uh, Party Like a Rock Star. Fucking, what's that other? Iverson. Cool. You, you know, two Post Malone songs. You like Post Malone? Sick. It's like, oh yeah, I love Chasers. Hey, oh yeah, hey. what do you like? You're like, oh, I got Coilovers and fucking VSKFs. Fucking hey, sick chaser. Hey, Gerard. I don't like Post Malone. <laughs> Dude, whatever. But you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> It's well, like, maybe they spent forty thousand dollars getting their chaser, exactly. and all they can afford for the first year is coilers and wheels. Is, yeah. And maybe yeah. that's the thing: the people who I are, don't, like the people who are creative. So happy that people are actually putting real wheels. I mean, you don't care because right? the wheel goes around and <laughs> spinny spin. But like, I'm spin, just happy spin, that spin. people I'm, are. I'm like, disappointed putting... that wheels are like the best that people can do. The thing is, is what you're actually pitching is you're disappointed that more people aren't Gerard. But if more people were Gerard, I don't want harder to be to... Gerard. Like that's the okay, thing. Okay, here I feel like say... I've been saying that for for but years. Let's just know when but... Gerard like shits shits on a car. I'm like, those cars have to exist no, they... so that your car is the top ten yeah, percent. If every car was the top ten percent, no, your car okay. would be nothing. That's like if you're the fucking best swimmer in the world, or like you're the best artist in the world, and yeah. like. No, you'll never get better because there are no other artists that are even. No, close like, to that's you. like being, saying, that's like being the best. That's, true at all, that's like being the best swimmer in the world and shit talking someone who's learning how to swim because you're like, look at this guy. He fucking sucks. He's not even close to my level. No, like, but he's I, a peon. It's like no, yeah, yeah everybody's also, at different levels, and when you're the top of the top, that like, shouldn't be so big. Have you watched last between dance? people learning and Olympians? It's like not that. learning, man. Like hey, these two things are people. It is really like you're learning how to modify a car. You're learning how to like have, pick styles. Okay, where's stuff. the rest of them? Where's the fucking rest of them? But it's only on a, a, on a journey. Why isn't everybody rich then? You know, like it's the same thing. Like why? Yeah, exactly. You know, like, why isn't everyone successful? If you're saying you're the best and you can only be as good as like what you're pushed to, fine. But then the other side of that, is I like, feel like you guys are in the same fucking thing. You guys are already like. Like allowing these people to be fucking peons. Yes. Okay. Because there will always be Why, peons. Listen, listen, listen. listen. It's yeah, the law of averages, man. Okay, like there's, listen, oh, there's always going to be people above and below. How many chasers in the USA have radius fenders? I don't know, Gerard. Fucking zero. Right, because they don't want to fuck up their chassis that they just spent thirty k on. Like I probably, don't know. but like, does it sound like a great investment? How many? How many fucking Hondas? in the USA have radius fenders? Well, probably, probably fucking not many. Oh, okay. Okay, but uh, what I'm, I'm saying is like, why is it that you can look to Japan? I'm not saying Japan is the be all end all, but like, why is it that you can look to Japan and there's a plethora of shit and after fucking five, six, seven, ten years, America still can't fucking think for themselves? Because we've had this whole conversation and I think I had to cut it out. What was the, the people person? that you look to for, for like motivation, isn't what the next generation is looking at. They're following YouTube channels. They're watching Hoonigan. They're watching Donut. They're watching all. They're looking at Final Bout. So then, you're asking for original thought from, like. I mean, why don't they follow the people in Japan that we all can fucking see? We can all see the same shit. It's on Instagram all day long. Because that's they haven't been introduced to that yet. They're they're the still next learning. You guys are just making also, such excuses. Like, here's the thing: 
you said if you're at the top of your game, nothing will challenge you to make you better. But that's not true. And then I've asked, did you watch the the Last Dance documentary about the Chicago Bulls? No. Why would it? What else? So watch that, and then watch Michael Jordan, arguably the best basketball player of all time, make up reasons to continue to be the best and push himself to be better. Like, it's honestly it, like an amazingly well done documentary. Yeah, I don't like, care about basketball. Like, I don't care about basketball either. And it's also just fucking hilarious to yeah. watch Michael Jordan rile himself up to go destroy people. That's all he did. He and I create, took that personally. Yeah, always. It's like that guy didn't look, that guy didn't nod at me. He didn't wave at me when he saw me in traffic. And I took that personally. And now I got to go destroy him. And that's what he did. And that made him better. So I... People that are good, I think, are, are great at what they do, are just going to continually strive to be better anyway. They don't need all of the peasants to be on their level. And, then one, and one thing I will say, though, is like if you're at the top of your game and you're with the top 5%, the bottom 95%, it, you're not concerned with them. You're not thinking about them. They're not the people pushing you. It's the people in the top 5% with you who are nipping at your heels, who I mean, maybe there's ones that are better yeah. that you're trying to be better than. That, that's what's pushing you, you know? I mean, yes I, yes, and no. I mean, I'm just trying to have more faith in the core community. Like, I want them to know more. I want them to be better. But they don't all suck. It's just that you you got to hedge your bets on certain things, I think is what it is. Yeah. To like Kevin's point of what he was saying, it's like, I went to film school with a guy from Toronto and I was like, man, what does like Toronto think of Saskatchewan? And he's like, honestly, Toronto doesn't even think about Saskatchewan. Why would we? We're like concerned with what's going on in New York. Like, and that's the same thing. It's like things that are below you, you you do not associate with. Like you don't need, I don't. That's a, I mean, it's a, I mean you it's don't not, think it's about not it. like arrogant, but it is a bit like, you know, I mean, you should be concerned with like a little bit of everything, I guess. I think that's very, I think at the, at the end, the nice thing about this that's not coming through is that Gerard is actually being kind of like, a bit of a hopeless Inclusive. romantic and like yeah. idealistic and wants everyone. And then Kevin and I are actually saying, yeah, like, it's exactly what I'm saying. You're, you guys, you're, you're gatekeeping you're, the fucking like low level, like car people. We're not <laughs> gatekeeping. That's just, we're being realists about it. And you're expecting the world from people that probably don't have the ability to give you the world. So yeah, you're just going to end up heartbroken. They don't have the, the dedication. They don't have the knowledge. They don't have the but, money. Let's start the zero nine fucking school for fucking sick cars. I I've, always, I've always yeah, wanted to do that. I've always wanted to do that. But just be like, look, this is what's sick. This is what's not sick. Like, you want to fucking build a sick That's car? That's just here. like your opinion, man. Sure. It is a bit. You of give that. me my opinion. You can either listen to it or not. But like we build sick cars and we'll show you that we do. And that's that's kind of another. Yeah, thing. I really that's, wanted to hear that next round. Now. Like, no, you're like, I, and that's another thing. And then no. you just kind of slowly no. decided not to. No, say. I was talking about the Aristo. I was like, like, I just maybe yeah. I don't know. The Aristo was kind of whatever. Like, I felt I like really liked the I, Aristo, I didn't feel like it had hit its peak, but I feel like maybe it just it wasn't the car to like get to the next level with, in my opinion. Why? Because it's a fucking GS three hundred, man. I don't know. Like, there's it's there's a lot of there it are wasn't. Like, it was an Don't Aristo. I mean, there were a lot of pretty crazy Aristos in GS300s. Uh, maybe they weren't drift cars, but like, I feel like that car kind of sick, but at the same time, I guess because it was like pretty conservative looking, nobody knew that the rear fenders were radius 20 millimeters. Nobody knew that like it was actually super low, but like, you know, I mean, dude, if yes, it was like did. tuck wheel and like drag side skirt while drifting, like, yeah, people knew. People knew it was had- low. I literally had photos of your car being like and not even an inch off the ground. And I remember looking at it and being like, shit, that's real fucking low. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, people knew. I mean, but that's the thing. The subjectivity of what we've talked about is that not everyone was into the fact that it was wide body. Some people like stock metal, some people like blah blah blah. There's I mean, the other thing too is to like the, the other thing too is it was a very like maybe not subjective car, but like as far as a drift car goes. There's always that thing where, like, if you're up here and everyone's down here, like, let's just say you have, like, a stretchy fucking rubber band and, like, you're trying to pull the people up and, like, hey, look at me. This is sick. This is sick. And then it's, like, you do something too sick and, it like, rubber band breaks. They can't fucking understand what the shit is. And, like, maybe now that, like, Herc has one and DeWill has one and stuff, like, the ropes building 
back up and people be like, oh yeah, those GSs, they're fucking dope. Those Aristos, like they're pretty sick. It's like, cool, cool, cool. And like, now they're like, but like before what you're saying we were is, too we were we were too fast and the rope broke. I'm gonna say a thing and I, I don't want it to be offensive and I don't want you to get upset. <laughs> but I think what you're actually saying is that you had the vision without the clout. And I'm not saying that you're cloutless, because that's not true. But yeah, I didn't receive the accolades of the fucking work that I did. The, because nobody can understand it. When so, but yeah, because someone else that already has the clout surrounding them of like being almost like an influencer. And I'm yeah. not saying that you're not, but I'm saying, and <laughs> there's also a hierarchy in that. And there are people yeah. that have yeah. higher, you know, so there is the 5%, uh, and someone in the 5% noticed probably and was like yeah i could do that too and then they kind of got to be the one to blow up the scene on it a little bit yeah no i'm not i'm not <laughs> upset about that part of it at all i just but that's what happened it was just like yeah you were ahead of the curve yeah. and you were doing really cool stuff but this is the same thing that we've talked about with carter drifting it's like i and i had this conversation this last weekend it was like why oh, someone said like i just like that carter goes and drifts places and doesn't really give a fuck and i was like yeah that works to a degree because he's not, and they're like and i like that he doesn't do it for like you know like clout and i was like super cool but one of the downfalls to being carter is sometimes when he shows up places people don't want to drift with him because they don't know who he is right like it's just like well that guy might be a liability i don't know who he is but then if you're someone with like x amount of clout and clout is a fun way to say like instagram followers or mm-hmm. whatever on and be like well i want to drive with that guy that guy if i he like i've seen him on the internet so i know him i know him i want to be around that and i want to drive with that and it's kind of like your ticket into a thing and that's the problem for carter occasionally is like goes a place and nobody nobody cares to look even though he's like carter is a great driver his car is super cool photographs well but it's like he doesn't have that ticket and i think that's kind of like an analogy for the same thing for you it's like you were doing something you're doing it really well and the people that got it that should get it got it but Mm -hmm. the masses aren't always there Mm -hmm. okay so what's this episode about i don't fucking know now (laughs) we've been talking for an hour about we were meant to talk about what serial nine's up to and instead we talked about how gerard wishes people were cooler This episode is about how to be cool, according to Gerard. (laughs) I don't, how did we even get on that? This is going to be such a pain to edit because I got to make Gerard not Not sound like a fucking asshole. I don't know. It's not that. It's like, I think what you're saying is completely reasonable. And through the lens of like, you're saying this because you care and you want things to be better. So uh, (laughs) let's do the intro. (laughs) All right, welcome to fucking Serial 9, Podcast 9, Serial Podcast 9. I don't know. Jesus, how did you forget the name of your own goddamn podcast? Isn't that Ryan's part? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was just supposed to say, yeah, hi, well, I'm, hi, I'm Gerard hi, I'm, Peralta. Hi, I'm Kevin Peterson. <laughs> and I'm Ryan, and this is Serial Podcast 9. We've been talking for an hour already. <laughs> you may or may not hear some of the stuff we were talking about. Yeah, this is going to be lots of fun for me to edit because I got to go through the back, put it in the front. Uh, You got to go through the back, huh? (laughs) Listen, Kevin, I'm not in the mood for your shit because now I got to figure out how to edit this. Today, we're talking about a few things. One is we wanted to thank a lot of our listeners that have reached out and said they like these podcasts. A lot of people say, hey, we're really, really stoked that you didn't stop at six. You know, your podcasts are good because they're relatable uh, I just feel like I'm one of the guys in the garage when you guys are talking, you know, the topics are fairly relevant. I mean, that's a subjective one, of course, but, you know, we do try to talk about things that people actually give a shit about. So, and Kevin, what do people say to you? Uh, basically all the same stuff, but just less frequently, probably. I feel like Ryan gets it the most. I do. I feel get like Ryan most. gets it the most, too. I do, and I I don't understand why. I, <laughs> I think... It's I I'm the barrier of entry because I'm the easiest way into serial nine. It's like this guy isn't actually serial nine, and there's a high probability that he'll respond. And I always do, and I appreciate it. I do get a ton of people saying what you know from around, you know, we've had people in Australia, 
think like New Zealand, uh, you know, all over the place, the US. And people always reach out and they're like, oh, yeah, I really like it. It's like the one automotive podcast I like listening to. And uh, yeah, it's super great. I, I, I love it. Uh, thanks for everyone who's listened to it. Uh, it's fun going places now and people having <laughs> quoting Gerard to me when I take photos is really great. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, we got some mail. We got some, some, some mail from G-Man, a handwritten letter, some horn buttons, some merch, like some cool stuff, man. Like, uh, he's been a long time serial nine follower since like literally the beginning. Whew. David Lee Decker says, Hey man, want to show appreciation for the podcast again? I dig how light it is. Just the homies talking, listening in makes you feel like one of the group love for Florida. I thought that was real nice. And, uh, Thank you, David. RB Stiltskin sent me a photo of like an <laughs> old J body with like tribal decals on it with, from like one of our like 90s, like episode yeah. when we talked about like yeah. trends that we would keep. And I was just thought that was a whole thing because like, man, <laughs> does that shit haunt my past? <laughs> it's being around it. We got the King Kurt says it's his favorite day of the week, which is very nice. Hump day is a great day. We uh, uh, have people that say, they either listen to it on their way to work or listening to it during work and it gets them through their day, which is pretty funny. <laughs> I know the sound of Kevin and Gerard gets me through my day. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, and like, look, obviously, like Marvin always was shouting us out and Marvin, yeah. a, good, a good serial nine lad with his 110. <laughs> uh, JN Miata even had like the question, I think, that we answered. I got Eric hoshberger which is a fun name reached out so yeah there's a ton of people and it is i do honestly really appreciate it and i i do like going places and i joke about it but it is fun going someplace and like i've had someone walk up and be like yo i've recognized your voice from the serial <laughs> podcast nine and i'm like oh that's that's super cool because honestly, I did media for a long time and I wrote articles and I haven't been writing a lot lately. And I think part of the reason that is, is because every week I have these conversations with Kevin and Gerard and it almost feels like an article that I would write. But this way, there's like actually two more voices in the room that can be mm -hmm. like, no, you're way off on what you're saying or like, yeah, maybe that <laughs> makes sense. It makes me feel somewhat relevant again which is nice met up with some friends on the weekend that i haven't seen for years and years and he's like hey man like i listen to the podcast and he's like you know i'm like well what you listen to the podcast it's, he's like you know kind of a car guy but not like a total car guy but he's in the cars but yeah apparently he's been listening to the podcast too which i thought was pretty cool uh and i mean even dim off when last time i saw him he was like hey man like podcasts are dope i was like no oh, you listen to podcasts right on yeah dim off dope yeah. um anyway yeah it's super great to have people uh actually care about what we do and be into it and i do really love when people give us questions uh we have an episode. Do, yeah. so, so what are you talking about today kevin uh i think we're kind of hearkening back to the first episode and doing kind of like a maybe an update or what's what's new with serial nine Six months later, after the first, what's new with Serial Nine? Has it been six months? I don't know. Has it? I guess it's been twenty six. Started in weeks. March. Twenty six weeks is that's half, half a year. year. No exactly. shit. That's insane, dude. Yeah. So what's new? Uh, what's happening with you, Kevin? Do you have a new car? Uh, yeah. Basically, everything I talked about in the first one, I feel, is no longer happening. <laughs> <laughs> But that's the way she goes sometimes, you know? Um, yeah, I basically kind of decided that I, I felt like even in that podcast, I'd said it. I'm like, it didn't really make sense to build the crown. The crown's the same as the Alteza. I'm not making any new parts. I'm literally building two identical cars. It didn't really make much sense. They're not the same car. I know. they have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, now I have the 18 crown, which I just got. So that's probably going to be... What the what fuck I'm... is an 18 crown, Kevin? Uh, 18 crown came after the 17 crown, which is the one everyone wants. <laughs> it's got the one Jay-Z. <laughs> um, but it is the same as the IS250, 350, and the third generation GS400. Can I say this about the crown? The, yes, the, the crown GS, that you yeah. have, the current crown that you have is like, controversial thing i'm about to say 
is like i think when like crowns like start to really like really look good you know like i i I agree no like when i was getting the ucf 20 i was like man like i can't one wait to one day where i can like own an 18 crown but now that i have the 18 crown i'm just like man i can't wait till i can own a 20 crown yeah yeah like (laughs) crowns i feel like and i don't know if it's just because like lack of options but like the crowns eventually look like they they kind of begin to like reign supreme and they do look very nice. I get the draw of the earlier crown because it's like one J. One J. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's the easiest way to get into a one J at this point, too, right? It's the most affordable way yeah. to get a one J. So I get the draw, but I've never really like was like, oh, I want like a, that gen crown. But when you took delivery of your new crown, I was like, this is dope. I would like a crown. Like that was a yeah. fun tipping point for me. Uh, maybe another part of it I would say is like Gerard Stagia hasn't really come to fruition yet. So, yeah. and then also I feel that the 18 crown much better goes with the Stagia. Like they're, they're both like next generation cars. They both, we don't make any suspension for those cars. Yeah. They're, you know, the, they, they together go much better than the crown and the Stagia in my opinion. You mean the 17 crown? Yeah. yeah sorry. Yeah. The 17 crown. JZS 171 for anyone that doesn't understand. And the other one is a GRS 180 something or other. Yeah. Really Mine's actually a 180, 180, but then there's a 182 and a 183 as well. Wouldn't that just be like all wheel drive or some garbage? Yeah. Bigger exactly. engine? No. no. No, they don't change the, as That's long as it's a GR engine. motor, there's no oh. denotion in the chassis code as to which engine it is. Like, like a JZS 1. 100 jzx 100 can be a 1j na a 1j turbo or a 2j they're just all jzx 100s but then when they do the jzs 160 and the 161 i feel like that's still a trim level difference it's not an engine difference huh. yeah yeah well fuck me all right yeah I, I don't know exactly and honestly we don't really give a shit it's just a fucking jzs 161 so <laughs> <laughs> i love them uh, i so love what's them, happening man. what's happening with your uh altezza your tetza uh, the Altezza is pre- basically just sitting there waiting, waiting to go drifting, which is a good feeling. I don't know that I've ever, uh, it's been a long time since I've had like a drift card that's just sitting there waiting for me to go drift it. Oh, you mean like my Aristo that was so sick that I just hop in and go drifting? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that's and, the and, no, first it's time pretty... you've ever said anything nice about the Aristo. <laughs> yeah. hey, that was a good yeah. thing about it. You know, it's like kind of, I kind of finished it. And it was just like, oh, we're going drifting. Uh, buy gas and tires. We're done. Let's get it to the track. And then, so what are you doing with that 17 crown? Besides a six speed swap, knuckles, fucking welded div, the whole nine yards. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I got to make a competent, like, daily driver to get rid of the echo so that's what that's going to be oh Basically, so you're leveling up your like life game <laughs> i'm i'm trying i'm trying <laughs> i'm clawing up at the clawing up the stairs so your your last gen it's crown, still not going to be it's still not going to be as nice as the blit though you know it's not going to have jdm cat backs and <laughs> and uh <laughs> And big brake kits and it's you fucking know. value, buddy. It's value <laughs> causes so the, more to make a non JDM fucking cat back. <laughs> so the the crown, the 170, 171, yeah. will be comparable ish to the Blit, which is meant to just be like a street car, like a yeah. nice a nice street car. Yeah, nice yeah. street car. The Alteza is just in the it's a stallion in the stable. Just you bring it out on race day, I guess. <laughs> yeah, just sitting there waiting. Just sitting there in the lurches. It's nice and reliable. And then the new crown, the GRS 180. Yeah. Will be what? Like, is it going to be a street car? Like, I don't understand. It's going to be a drift car, dog. Oh, so, every, so that every, car goes a, the, every car is a drift car. Yeah. <laughs> every car for Kevin is like potentially a drift car. It's like if the Altezza fails, the 171 could be a backup. And then if that fails, this GRS 180 is like every car that's worth owning is potentially a drift car. Which is that the same equation for Gerard? I'm not I'm not sure that it I is. Don't know. I don't think so. Um I mean, all the cars obviously have to be driftable. Uh one thing I was gonna say though is like what's the direction aesthetically that the one set 181 and the 171 are going i mean besides low and it's like sick i mean i guess that's really all it is well originally when we were 
planning it all out like the we were trying to have maybe matching wheels on the stagia and the 171 and maybe matching colors and matching flare styles and so that those cars would look like a team and we'd have a cohesive team appearance cars. you know what would your team name be team serial nine oh you did it <laughs> serial fucking nine <laughs> good i was worried there would be another team name and be very it's called wagon sedan force king <laughs> good <laughs> Uh, okay anyways what else and what's gonna happen Uh, now so now i mean now i'm thinking about just making it extremely extremely low radius fenders but not a flared or not like a extremely flared fender or a a wide body welded on steel fender but yeah honestly for the 18 it feels like it's too soon for me to say like to to make that into a drift car is is taking away a lot of the things about it that I like. So it would be cool just uh, to make it into a car that was like the Celsius for a bit so we can develop the parts. And then... What was then, the Celsius like? Uh, I mean, I, I'd call it a scraper if, if it wasn't so high. So like cambered, <laughs> like a stance car. So like Yeah, exactly. Like cambered a stance out, super like low. Super low, cambered out stance Some car. sort of cool fender work and like wide wheels that should yeah. fit, but they do. Yeah, yeah I think that would look sick. That's, that's a good... That's a good... I think that would look awesome basically yeah i just want to be able to make all the parts like the you know the front lower all the rear arms the rcas and yeah be able to have that car is like a pretty cool stance daily type of car and then maybe if it gets too heaty then or the something happens with the motor or the transmission so basically tomorrow (laughs) yeah or uh you know or i'd wreck the alteza beyond repair and there's just oh if you really gerarded the alteza then what (laughs) well i mean there's a drift gala coming up so Oof, round two yeah <laughs> are you sure gerard's gonna be out there just sabotaging you like yeah. this makes for good content yeah. uh, oh i never even thought of that it does make it for content yeah <laughs> the highlight of that video you too can have eight thousand likes <laughs> yeah oh and so many like people being heartbroken about your yeah. car yeah yeah and then you um, can spend the next year talking about how much you didn't actually like the Alteza. <laughs> I already talked about that. Yeah, you guys, the <laughs> worst. All right, so... So what's going on with your cars, Gerard? My cars, uh, okay, so I had big dreams to build the stage uh, uh, quickly. That didn't happen just because shit takes long. Our company basically took off. Uh, we had to hire a bunch of people. We we're extremely busy all the time. And like basically building a car from the ground up sort of takes a lot of time. Um, and, and also like the, the parts are literally still a lot of the parts, not like super, super necessary parts, but a lot of the parts are literally still in Japan six months later. So are some of them in Russia as well? Do you have, I I think they're technically on the way they might be on the boat already. Yeah. But yeah, like all the arrow, uh, you know, stuff like seat rails, exhausts, nothing like super mechanically important, but like a lot of the soul of the car to make it actually like kind of sick is is you know still was when's still the last time you drove the stage uh probably it's been a bit four months ago i don't know i took it off the road when i insured the blit yeah yeah i mean i daily drove it for like a really like a i felt like a pretty long time and then i just switched over to the blit after i finished the swap so s- that car is still sort of sitting there uh but i feel like we're gonna totally not totally but i feel like we're gonna probably remove the engine and all that stuff relatively soon when try. will you do that because i feel like you've been saying that since the first i mean that's the thing man it's like I, I i we have one guy that's mechanically inclined that we would just normally be like hey can you do this uh but he's also our head of assembly so am i going to take away from assembling products that sell all day long to take the engine out of my <laughs> drift car like probably not you know what i mean so wait who be- is that person that would be Satoshi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, I just had a baby six months ago. So like, you know, as far as extracurricular sort of free time outside of work, it's, it's pretty slim right now. So, I mean, that's kind of a big factor in like. It's reserved for bike rides in Fast and the Furious 9. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Okay. So then what I did is I basically, um, because I had all the parts for my blit and my blit was sort of sitting around. 
Um, I just said, Hey, I'm going to get this done because I want to drive a one J car on the daily. Cause I love one J's and uh, it's been a while since I got rid of the Rosa. So I fast tracked the engine swap into the blip and been driving that, uh, slowly refining it. Um, it actually runs well now. It's pretty fast and I'm doing videos on it. So the first video should drop either this week or next week. As far as the intro, uh, we've filmed, um, the fender rolling, um, the wheels, ceramic coating the wheels, uh, a few things on the engine swap. Like I didn't film the whole engine swap and stuff. It's pretty, you know, everybody knows how to put a one J in, but just yeah, everybody knows how to put a one J in a car. Well, just stuff that was like maybe slightly specific to like those type of cars where it's like, you know, the fuel pump has to get a, a return line, same as an IS three, IS 300 and like, you know, like the AT emulator is required, you know, stuff like that. Mm. Um, you do have an AT emulator video. I do. For yeah. that car. It's on an Aristo. For a junk Aristo. Speaking of which, we got to test drive that and film that. Yeah, we do. Fuck yeah, that's no. on the list. There's a lot of things in the works, it feels like. Yeah. And then so that car uh, we have for the Blit is a Spectrum Motorsports Turbo Upgrade, uh, ECU Masters, so called plug and play. Uh, from Florida Garage and, and SCG. So that's going to be like a plug-in harness and stuff. We have injectors. Uh, we did get it baselined at AES. We're basically doing the ECU, then the turbo upgrade, and then all the suspension is finally going to be in. We have all those videos. Sounds like yeah. a lot of videos. Sounds yeah. like a lot of videos. I wonder so, who's going to work on all of those videos. Know, it's Ryan guy that sort of basically works for us for free and yeah, he's <laughs> fuck that guy. Um, and my truck, my truck is not doing anything. I've wanted to lift my truck and drive I don't it. Think That's you no should concern. Lift your of, truck. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think so you know. should lift that thing, man. I think fuck it's yeah. fine. No, it's not. No, because then it won't go into any parking garage ever. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Actually, if I lift it two inches without any sort of racker, it'll still go into parking garage. I, I was worried to. about it when I drove it. It's okay. definitely like when you can put your hand out the sunroof and touch the roof. It's definitely like, uh, yeah, it's a bit. Yeah. Okay, good. So I want to know because uh, that's cool. <laughs> the two serial nine guys have these cars, and they're building them. But what about products? products. Ah, okay. So what? Kevin can new? talk about some products. Products. Product. Um, how how detailed here do we want to get? Are we? I mean, are we going to talk uh, about this fucking steering wheel? That's what I was about to say. Are we are we releasing yeah, yeah. information about previously unreleased product information? I mean, I feel not... like we can. We do have a steering wheel coming. Just say it. Have yeah. No. We yeah. Exactly. We have a steering wheel coming. We have the first article. I've I've drifted with it. It's uh, it's definitely in our opinion a pretty sick design. There's only yeah. going to be a hundred of them. It's a limited edition. Yeah. If you like crazy steering wheels, you're going to like the serial line steering wheel. Yeah. If you like crazy steering wheels that you feel that you could still actually use without wrecking them by using them, you will also like the serial line steering wheel. Mm, I've, yeah. I've seen the serial line steering wheel and I do like the serial line steering wheel. Yeah. Well, so far, every single person that's seen it that says it's pretty sick. So. Yeah. Not um, to be a dick, but do you think anyone would? sit in a room with you and be like no nah, gerard and kevin this is shit i mean yeah sure I, I do okay i mean i don't know i like i like you value people who are willing to give me honest critiques and criticisms about what yeah. they perhaps don't like you know yeah 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 i'd, ra I'd rather that than someone just sit there and be like yeah no it's the sickest thing ever when in, act in actuality they there's right. they don't like it at all i just always think back to to Alex from Rare Spec Wheels agreeing that fake wheels might be all right when talking to Gerard. So, <laughs> I mean, you know. Steering knuckle. We have a drift knuckle. It's called yeah. the AK-49. It's literally going to be released like next week. Uh, so say the actual week. That's August. You might as well say like this week. Yeah. It, this it's going to be, two be weeks. released be two weeks from before now. you hear this episode. <laughs> if you're listening to this, Go to the website. It's button. on the website. It's already right there. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah you can get the steering knuckles. Uh, um, so it gets 50 degrees of angle. Uh, it's also an RCA. It's made of 70. Uh, no, it's not. It's made of 6,000 aluminum. Uh, so it's super light. It's very strong. We've tested it. Uh, it comes with an outer tie rod. Uh, yeah, extended outer tie rod. Extended outer tie rod. 
that will help you get your toe back in line. And it's steel under, dowels. Steel dowels. It's under four hundred bucks. I think. Sounds like a steal. Should I put this on the wrist? <laughs> We don't, it doesn't fit the Aristo brother. Well, that's so dumb. What, why, what vehicles do you make it for, Gerard? Yeah. Uh, we make it for all the JZX cars. We make oh, it for all the ones that you just spend shit, the, like the whole <laughs> first part of this shitty yeah. on. Well, you know why, you know why those cars aren't that great? They don't have yeah. green anodized steering knuckles. Yeah, they don't have AK 49s, bro. Bruh, bruh, bruh. All right, say it again because I interrupted you. So it goes Angle on. King 49. Yeah, so the Angle King 49 steering knuckle is for the JZS 171 crown. All the JZXs, so JZX90, JZX100, JZX110, uh, and the IS300 slash SXE10 Alteza, it's for those cars as well. It is also Why for the, the 110 JZX? Blit, the 110 yeah. Barossa, Barossa yeah. Yeah. the 110 Mark II. Yep. And uh, yeah, I guess if you're real stupid, that means Chaser, Cresta, and Mark II, JZX 190 as well. <laughs> so. Why not my car? Also, I don't need this, but why not my car? Because yours has the larger knuckles uh, and it doesn't fit. Um, it has different spacing on the yeah, ball joint. spacing on the ball joint. That's fine. I don't know what I would do with this. That's I why Gerard that. was going to convert to IS because everything yeah. is a little bit smaller and lighter. Oh. Yeah, that's and then also, like, we wouldn't have to make a specific GS knuckle. We just, just make an Gerard. adapter kit. Yeah. How hard is that to do? Well, we've never gotten around to doing it. <laughs> and we never <laughs> will now. Oh. <laughs> we could do it on your car, Ryan, if you want. Yeah, you no, could. We could. We could, we could. Yeah, I yeah. mean, if that's a thing you ever want to try, you still have access to a JZS. Exactly. If you want. You so know, what Ryan's I, mean, I know how much you hate steering those knuckles. Yeah. It does yeah. actually. Uh, why would you want a steering knuckle, Gerard? Why? Uh, why would I even want this thing? Okay, so I mean, JZXs are pretty cool. ISs are pretty cool, but they're definitely not that sporty. They are sporting, but they're not super sporty. So two things that the Angle King Forty Nine will give you is quicker steering and more steering angle so the car generally will be much more fun to drive it is a near zero ackerman setup it does have ackerman still so you can drive it on the street um it doesn't feel like totally shitty uh but it is not at all specific it is more geared towards drifting but yeah quicker steering more steering angle so even just parking it's like sick um but obviously the quicker steering, like, you know, inputs just even on the highway, you know, just driving the car generally, it's like totally different car. Totally. Oh, different car. Yeah. well, now I am interested. Exactly. Also, I'm a little bit peeved that I just found out right now that the AK bit stands for Angle King. Yeah. <laughs> Like you never said that. You're just like, what do you think of the name AK49 or whatever? And I was hey, like, man, we always. And I, and I was like, yeah. There's always another I'm level about... to it, you know? Yeah. yeah everything. And has I, I was like, I don't know how I feel about gun culture all the time. <laughs> and then it's like, yeah. turns out it's like Angle King. It's like, yeah, well, yeah that's cool because it is Van King. Yeah. And it's got a really cool logo, which is, a, you know, AK49. <laughs> so you yeah, like want to put it in your car because it looks cool. Yeah, all right, cool. So that is that's interesting. So those are the things. Mm -hmm. Both of those are parts that you've sold me on. Yeah. <laughs> Steering wheel <laughs> and this uh AK49. Uh what? one one thing that we have coming up pretty quick here that is uh, let me uh, guess. Is it uh control arms for a Tesla? <laughs> no. Ah, ah honestly, shit. no, I it was super funny because I was talking about that today with Soha and Satoshi, and Soha was like super into it because uh yeah I don't, know, I, I don't know he was so into it and then uh because i was telling him how like the the only other or not the only company but the most popular ones are like 1800 dollars us and he was just like yo like why are we should make these right now and then i was saying how like also marvin had those control arm yeah. ball joint issues where there's no grease straight from the factory yeah. in the upper arms and there's no recall they're just like yeah sorry like you got the ones without grease like Buy some, more <laughs> yeah. Buy some more Tesla parts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the moon. Goodbye. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. So yeah, thank, it, thank like, you for it was like man, like we sh 
we should really make those arms like while well, that problem still exists. Like, I agree. Yeah. Well, I'm let's do it. I'm down. Let's do it. Just make. I don't um, have anything to do with your business. No. But I like so what idea. what I was gonna say. And this is uh, might be a slightly kind of interesting part for you, Ryan. Is on the oh, never mind. Because you you obviously have your sweet red red center caps on your emotions, don't you? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, basically, we're making a, a hub cap that goes behind your wheel to cover that like rusty, rusty Toyota hub. Cast oh, can I put that on the Forerunner? No. Damn it. No. It's basically for when you're running like a TE37 or any of those sporting type wheels that do not have center caps. So what do you see behind your wheel besides a ugly cast, you know, yeah, hub? Yeah. So it's we made all these rusty. like. Yeah, so we make these like billet sort of caps that bolt on and they're pretty sick and they'll come in different colors and they're just like a concave sort of like trim cap thing that looks like the top of our SK3 shift knob. Uh, and they actually look pretty sick. They're just, you can just get black if you want, but then they'll be like red, purple, green, blue, whatever. And uh, they just have a little bit of laser etching on them. 25 year old me would have been all over this because 25 year old me when he bought his XT9s was like, I don't need a center cap. That's stupid. And then yeah. I didn't buy it. And so people would comment when I drove my 180, they'd be like, you got to put something on there. It's like random dudes on the street would be like, hey, you, I, I can see you the thing. You're going to yeah. get a rock in there and it's going to fuck shit up. And I was like, get out of here, man. Yeah. I'm my yeah. own thing. Get out of here, random dude. Yeah. You might, get you out might. of here. We might make some sort of thing for the rear as well, like to cover the axle. The only problem is on a lot of wheels, the the end of the axle is real close to the wheel. Uh, yeah. And then also it has to kind of press in and it's not like held as well. The front ones bolt on. Right. Uh, the rear ones sort of have to be pressed on and then might be a pain in the ass to take off. But right, we'll right. see. We'll make a couple of prototypes and cool. suss so it out. Yeah. So Tesla parts, though. I'm all... <laughs> for the gold mine of the Tesla part. We got a bunch of new uh, merchandise coming out very soon here. Yep. We have uh, a couple of new logo designs, a couple of I new mean, shirts. We just released some hats. If you haven't seen them, we got some yeah, hats. They're, they're kind of cool. cool. Um, we got some iron on patches. Yeah, some iron on patches. So if you want to start a biker gang. Yeah, bro. Yeah, or maybe you want to customize a lame jacket they gave you free at work or something, you know? <laughs> um probably one of the most exciting things though is the evolution of our our serial triple nine arms into aluminum uh we got our prototypes of the front upper and the rear upper for basically is and you know they're going on my blit and probably on the alteza um so we spent a lot of time redesigning the rear upper to be billet aluminum uh it is I want to say almost two pounds lighter per side than our current arm, um, but is also stronger um, and looks basically fucking insane. They look so sick. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we're stoked on the aluminum transition. Um, yeah, we've basically been trying to do that for, for a while. We converted our SXE and Aristo rear lower control arm from a fabricated, very much welded steel arm to a one-piece billet aluminum arm. Mm-hmm. That was the first arm that we did. And right now, we're also in the process of converting all of our hex bars, which would be our toe arms and traction arms to aluminum from steel as well. And then, as Gerard said, now we've done... Uh, prototype uh, front upper in billet for uh, the 110 SXE chassis that I've been testing on my car and Gerard's about to put on his blit. And then we have our prototype rear uppers on the way as well. So so we have to, yeah. So the blit is a daily driven car. So we do street testing. Uh, the Alteza is a drift car. So that's sort of like track testing. Um. But I mean, some of you guys might be thinking, whoop de fucking do build aluminum, like that's nothing cool. But like, once you see them, you will understand why it's taking so long. Um, Because one thing that I absolutely hate is billet arms that look like they're billet arms. Uh, They should be beautiful. You basically have full creative freedom as to how the thing can look. Uh, So why should it look like a a basic chunky blocky aluminum machine thing? Like you could- Why does it look like a girder? 
Yeah, it can be beautiful. It could be, you know, have really nice curves. It could be really rounded. It could be strong and light. Like all those factors, we spent a lot of time um, designing the parts to be both strong, light, and beautiful. I feel like so maybe it that's... can be like the Beyonce of control. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Sure. Yeah. That's what you were saying. <laughs> beautiful, strong, yeah. and light. Powerful. Yeah. Part of a power couple. Graceful graceful yeah yeah elegant uh, elegant class ferocious. ferocious so yeah so <laughs> yeah not only are you stancing your car uh but like you're 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 putting jewelry under the car doing it so like that's kind of sick too yeah you're yeah, reducing yeah. your unsprung weight if you're a drifter mm-hmm. or a road racer and mm-hmm. you care about those things mm-hmm. yeah so it's like all, all the like the is 300 for example that generation of toyotas all the suspension arms are steel um, and the next generation of cars, essentially like the 350Z and like the GRS cars. So like IS 350 and IS 250, all those suspension parts, the majority of them are aluminum. Yeah. Um, so we are basically trying to take those older cars and bring them into the new generation and improve on the suspension uh, versus just change it. But then also you're about to take the new generation of cars and make those like give people the option to make those better as well right yeah i mean so you got like you have this shit coming out but then in case someone's missed the point of kevin's new crown it like unlocks the potential of the next gen kind of like lexus cars which is great because all those cars are coming down in price Mm -hmm. and months ago i told gerard that he should get a third gen GS and he scoffed at me and then bought a Seja and that was I'm done nice. with those cars. Sorry. How dare you? <laughs> the next car that I buy, okay, so this might be you would have been a king among men. <laughs> Go on. I really, really like the Q50s. So if I'm gonna buy and then I sort of really like the VQ37. So small possibility if I get rid of any one of these other cars that I'll be moving to one of those cars. Hey, what car would you get rid of? Probably the Blit. Because it has the most resale on it, you think? Um, Because, well... It definitely does right now. It's also it, arguably the car you like the most, which is interesting. It honestly is. Like, yeah, that's the thing. It wouldn't really make sense <laughs> for me to... Because, to, I mean, the, that car would be primarily like a... Uh, no. Because I, I just really want a six-speed, like... Like, I just really want a six-speed big Nissan sedan. So, like... With like, I don't know, either the VR30 or the VQ37. But anyways. I like you would regret selling the Blit the most. I I would, but I mean, I feel like it's the only car that, that I. That would can. be your last Toyota, and then you'd fully be 100% Nissan. Yeah. And but then like a, now you have like a big Nissan wagon and a big Nissan sedan and honestly, a okay, so this, this SUV. Is what, this is what would actually probably happen: is I would I would sell the 2JZ. And, and buy that car because like honestly like yeah. the thing that i like the absolute least right now is that 600 horsepower 2jz that's sitting in the garage yeah so like that would be the actual one j yeah which is weird that i mean look if we're being honest and i don't know if this is going to go in or not it's <laughs> weird that your track car i get why that's the engine but it's like the thing that you're least attached to is going to be the car in the car that's supposed to mean the most to you most to you yeah you mean the the yeah, yeah, the stage was meant to be like this, like it's your pinnacle car. You want to do every single aspect, like the engine bay and seats and like <sighs> I engine like, oh, wide body an and engine and everything that I don't really care about. That's super cool. That is. I don't know. I just I just wish I had more money to do more things to build more cars. So I wish I was like Kevin and had like eight cars. <laughs> Well, you could. You just have to have drive an Echo every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do like the Blit. I, I really wouldn't like to sell that car because A, it is my 1J car. And like, I do enjoy the 1J absolutely the most, especially on like a daily thing. The only thing is the car itself. Like, I, I could leave the actual JZX, honestly. It, it, it's like, I would probably take the 1J, put it in the, in the Stasia, make that the sort of daily, and then build the q50 as like a drift car just because like the stage has a great chance i just feel like you're splitting hairs at that point i mean i bet you i bet you could sell the the blit as a as a roller without yeah. the motor and tranny exactly for, for a good amount and then sell the 2j 
and the CD for an equally good amount that's probably equal to the car. Yeah, that's <laughs> kind of what I mean. Like, and then, I just, then you have definitely a lot of money to play with. I feel like we're going to make all these videos and then this is exactly what you're going to do. <laughs> Like, whatever then then you'll still have the car though, right? it's still yeah. good it's still you still yeah, have yeah. the content for the people and we still make the parts for those cars yeah yeah yeah. or where's that really bad case scenario you just get sick of it and you do it anyway and we don't finish the video. I'll, I'll tell you straight up right now the stage is a better car than the jzx 110 100 like as far as a driving car and like the the handling and the it's a fucking better car yeah it's a better car except like there's a bunch of ways that they might not be a better car. Like, yeah, it's a better car once you get it's a Nissan versus a Toyota. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. Like, it's just like you literally sit in any of the seats, and it's it feels like you're sitting in like a baseball stadium. Okay, but I mean, yeah, the seats the seats on that particular model are obviously garbage for sure. It's basically like sitting on fucking bricks. Like you had to run one wiper because like your your wiper fucked up, and that like, is you true. Know what I mean, like like, <laughs> like true. there's a bunch of shit like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, I think like how you. It, it's the classic Nissan guy with a Toyota engine, as mm-hmm. Kevin said, and I quote: "Nissan builds a sporting chassis, yeah, and Toyota builds a reliable engine, like the engine mm-hmm. that people want that puts out the power." It's yeah. just a very weird mix. Is a Stagia with any? I guess a Stagia with any Jay Z in it is. But I mean, like that was the other thing. Like Gerard's already talked about not wanting the Stagia and putting a VK58 in there. Not wanting a Jay Z in stage yet, but a VK. Yeah, but I honestly think the way that this is going, he's just going to go back to that sedan that I had to watch the video of the annoying dude talking oh, about. Oh, the Q50? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you can just buy that car and it has the engine already in it, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I think Gerard, yeah. like, because the new Gerard says, I don't want to do all this work. I just want, I just want the weapon. And that's what yeah. I do. Yeah. I like this. This has turned into like an, ex- like, a uh, and an <laughs> interrogation of Gerard's <laughs> photos of what may or may not be, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, what are you going to put your Honda engine in? I'm still, I'd like the never ending weight on parts, basically. Yeah, but like, so you get that, and then you're like, you have three cars in front of you, which, in, like, <laughs> what car takes that engine? <laughs> or is it like, Matt, like, musical chairs and like a one J comes out of one car and goes into the new crown. And then, I mean, that's definitely a possibility. Like if the Altezza is still alive and kicking, then it would probably put that motor in the Altezza and then. Take and it honestly, the that would make the most sense for the company to build a Jay-Z uh, mount kit for the IS 250 versus a fucking Ooh. K series. Yeah, yeah. That would make the most sense. But now you could also make the K series for the IS Oh, that also would make sense. Which too. probably already exists, but yeah, it's not a serial the, nine part. Because the K series is cheap. Well, we talked about this. Nah, not K necessarily. Not it's, it's not cheap. It's not you buy it, and uh, but Case, one day, you know, actually, though. I did get feedback on someone said when we talked about K series. Nope. When one we day? talked about buying two Js and one Js, and like how the cost of it and. The thing at the end of the day that we weren't taking into account was like people's time and the wiring and the know-how and all of these things. And it's like, even if you get a stock, even if you take like the uh, the Aristo 2J and you're like putting that into a car, it's like we kind of, he said we were just kind of like mauled over like all the details of, of getting it in there. <laughs> If that makes sense, like there's a lot more, like, yeah, like how hard is it to actually finish my one day swap till it, yeah, to get it to work properly? Yeah, yeah, like all that shit. Like if you're not, no Kevin man, you just Gerard, slap it in. Yeah, it's a lot. Slap of shit. it in. Yeah, if you're not Kevin or Gerard and you do that swap, what's the actual cost of it, right? Because someone comes along and they're like, I'm just gonna buy a two J out of an Aristo, and then I'm gonna put it in this car, and then I'm gonna manual swap. It. I would so say, but I mean, like. But like, even if you are Kevin or Gerard, it's like you're still gonna spend like four hours a day after work for like yeah. a week and a half, and yeah. it, you know, like yeah, like just because you can do the work yourself doesn't mean like it's still taking time, it's yeah. still taking yeah, yeah, time yeah. away from doing other things. But then if you can do, but if you have to pay someone to do the work, I guess is what you're saying. Three thousand like, minimum, probably, to do that engine swap. Well, I mean, it, the thing with today and today's day and age is like you could buy a really good wiring harness 
specific to your car and put the <laughs> fucking ECU in there and fire it up. Like that's, it's not that hard anymore, but it does cost money. Like a, even a for age. the new Lexuses. Sorry. Now I've changed. The no, I mean, we're, we're talking about most of these are like race cars, right? Like yeah, yeah. No, nobody's really putting a one J in a fucking IS 350 yet. Like, and if you are, it's probably a race car. Like, I, I mean, yeah, like, like, like Rad Dan did it and yeah. it ha- everything works, but like that was literally like months and months and months yeah. of work. It's and like a guy's just a show, a guy with a, a show car is like paying through the nose for them to figure out how yeah. to integrate the CAN bus and have everything work. And like, yeah, that's just a lot of shit. <clears throat> even with the cost of the 1J right now, doesn't even seem like that. I don't know. It's don't it's know. you know what's fucking kind of weird for me. I don't know. This is like relevant or not relevant. I feel like the more I think it's stupid, but I feel like the more popular something is, like I want to say I don't want to like it less, but I feel like I do. Like I love one J's and I feel like it's an amazing shit, but like I'm kind of just like I wanna I wanna try something else, you know. Well, here's what I think, Gerard, is that like you're like here, you're like, yo, one J's sick, but like that was you. 13 years ago yeah and now everybody else has come up to 1j6 and you're like all right well yeah 1j6 but like there's all these other things that you guys like aren't looking at and then like slowly people are going to come up to there too it's like the same thing where it's like yo 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 cressida i'm going to build this cressida and like all of a sudden you like pull all the people up and then you're like no i'm going to go over here and i'm going to build this aristo and then all of a sudden it's like okay i'm going to pull all these like the people up and it's yeah yeah. now here we are back at our fucking top 40 reference so yeah like (laughs) uh yeah gerard gerard's like the music producer who's Fucking seeking out the new Sean shit Combs trying to feed it. you more stuff yeah trying to feed people some yeah, new and interesting gerard things doesn't always want us to hear the single he doesn't want it always to have a, a hit single <laughs> or he's like he, he'll make the hit single but it's not it's not that only people only understand the hit single yeah. it's like what do you mean you only fucking listen to juicy because he's got <laughs> other hits <laughs> You know, like um, uh, anyway. Um, so, what else yeah. is new that we're working on? Fucking, what else? What are your is other new? hits? What are your radio hits? <laughs> this right here. This is definitely our number one radio hit. It is. Uh, so, some things that we're going to be doing that are new is, I feel that we are going to reduce the frequency of the podcast yes. in the future. Yes. We um, love the podcast, but it's a lot of work. And. What we're going to try to do <laughs> is just transfer that work into visual Video. works. Videos. Yeah. Into videos. Yeah. We, you know, we always wanted to be releasing more videos. And it feels like now the amount of work that we're doing with the podcast is is equal to releasing a video, you know? Maybe so, a bit less, but yeah, it's, it's definitely yeah. like, yeah, look, the it's enough that it makes it, you know, easier than that but it does capitalize a lot of time to do the podcast i agree i get that oh okay. we're making all new arrow for all these cool cars just kidding ah. we might be dropping arrow <laughs> so every wednesday night hang on i want to go back to this every wednesday yeah. night instead of filming a pot uh, recording a podcast i'm just going to go shout from my balcony at people at people yeah yeah, just random shit about cars that they don't Just spend about. three hours editing a video yelling at Gerard and myself on the screen. Hey, <laughs> what other products you guys got coming? Uh, uh, what about a what about a cat t-shirt? Is that a thing that's coming? Yeah, I mean, that was one of the things that... Did you not talk about that, Kevin? The different designs, logos, something or other? Yeah, we didn't really go into too many details about it. But yeah, I said we had a bunch of new designs coming out for merchandise. Mm, yes what mm-hmm. i mean on the like general company front we have expanded our company we have made it more efficient we have new suppliers that are not always behind schedule so um, what does that mean for me as a customer it means you get your product oh a huge thing we have to um say is there's going to be a price increase that is a huge yeah. thing now yeah. you've lost me but do I still get the same quality product for virtually <laughs> more money? Yes, you still get the same quality product for basically the same amount of money. Mm, yes. Yeah. Okay. It's just that we haven't raised our prices in three years, I think. I think it's been three years. About three years, but material costs are higher. I mean, our operating costs are higher. 
uh, everything is just more expensive generally. Like, I mean, general inflation has been up a couple percent and we haven't raised yeah. our prices, but it's not going to be a huge increase and it's not going to be across the board. It'll be uh, more on some products, less on some products, um, but it's so only going to be by now. Percent. Like it's almost a sale to buy now or it is. Yeah. Now? We're going to basically announce that um, like on Instagram and stuff, we're going to have a date when we are going to raise the prices. So we'll give you guys, you know, like a week or two to, to buy the stuff. Um, and then after that, the price will be up and then, uh, yeah, so it is basically a sale sort of small one. Yeah. It's like a, it's a reverse sale. Yeah. That's fine. I dig that. Good. Um, Hey, I got a question. Why would a guy like me buy your engine mount? Oh, that's another new product. Um, let me just quickly say, yeah, so we have the engine mounts. We initially released them with a, what is it, 87, Kevin? Mm-hmm. Probably. I don't. We don't know that. Yeah, but we have 87, I think, is currently what we have, around 87 shore. So that's like a pretty stiff engine mount. Um, they were initially released, you know, for sporting, for drifting. Um, but they are a little bit stiff for the average daily driver slash, you know, weekend or like, you know, car that, you don't want to be harsh. So we actually got some softer inserts made and they are 80 sure. So mm-hmm. why you'd want those Ryan, um, increased response. So basically, especially on the JZS, the engine mounts are very soft and very sort of like, you don't want to feel any vibration. You don't want to feel any, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it'd be more direct your throttle. Anytime you hit the gas, when the engine, you know, transmits the power, um, it transmits it more efficiently. So oh. it's, it's a bit stiffer. So yeah. that seems like a, not a bad investment for not a ton of money. Yeah. Is it oh, super hard to install? It's definitely like a bit of work to install. Um, I wouldn't say super hard, just maybe a bit tedious. There's a lot of stuff that has to kind of come out. Um, but I mean, I almost guarantee if you have any sort of Jay-Z powered automobile, the factory engine mounts are not are are either totally fucked already or very near totally fucked. Oof. Well, I guess I'll add that to my list of things. Here's a thing that um okay, guy like me wants to buy something from Serial Nine. What is what are the things that a guy like me should be buying from Serial Nine? So I mean, what's what, a guy like you? What do you mean? Describe so your like, guy. like I'm a <laughs> guy that has a Jay Z engine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm already manual, so that's mm-hmm. fine. Uh, a guy that it's not my daily. I do like I, I drive it for fun. I want it to be a fun car to drive that handles, mm-hmm. uh, handles well. You know, like is I don't know, just like all around, like it's like the weekend warrior car, like to go out and have fun in. Okay, so maybe mild track at some point. But yeah, I mean, I would I would say. If you want it to be more sporting in character, I would absolutely do the subframe mounts because um, the stock ones on all the Toyotas are very soft from factory. So there's a lot of movement within this from the subframe to the body. So there's a lot of sort of like lack of precision from the rear suspension because literally the whole mounting subframe moves at least half an inch in every direction, up, down, left, right. Like it just moves. Right. So that one works really well. The engine mounts are good. Pick your pick your stiffness. Um, the softer ones would be a little bit of an upgrade from stock. The stiffer ones would be obviously like way crazier. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Kevin? What's next? I mean, I'm I'm a huge proponent of the diff mounts because I feel like I feel like you can kind of feel them more directly. Like there's more tactile feel I get from the diff mounts than the subframe mounts, the subframe bushings. It's probably because when you transfer the power, it's more it, you feel that right away. Yeah, exactly. Like when you move from a when you go off from a light, for example, like uh, you know from a stop, uh, it's instantly every shift you feel it. So that the diff mounts are good for that. Yeah, I feel like if you're just kind of like the average dude, it's you know you're gonna want to do your tension rod bushings because they're probably shot. Um, yeah, absolutely, that's. And then yeah, like Gerard said, like if you have a Toyota and you enjoy driving it, you could you'll probably really really like the ak-49 knuckle because it just feels so much better on the turn in and like 
it's just so much crisper like when when you turn the wheel it actually does something whereas it feels like a lot of toyotas there's a lot of vagueness on center yeah like have you ever driven an s chassis or like a 350z or like a fucking porsche or something and you like driving that the knuckles will make your car not feel like a camry they'll feel more like a <laughs> sports car yeah but camrys are still kind of dope um <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's good. So I, I think that is actually the other thing that you didn't say, but I think was actually important because the number one thing that I get questions about on my car, aside from the hood, is uh, my wheel fitment. And the wheel fitment was only possible on my car because I have the Gerard's arms. old upper control arms on my car. Mm-hmm. Like my wheels weren't going to fit until we put those on. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a very popular sort of thing like if you have a wheel fitment issue like even perfect example my blit um so you put wheels that are like slightly too aggressive on you have two choices one you could destroy the fenders and two you could camber in the wheels or you know camber in the pull the top of the wheel in to, to clear um our choice is always going to be add the camber uh, and yeah so a front upper arm and a rear upper arm are the best ways to do that yeah, so for average Joe, I feel like that was out of the gate, pretty solid choice as well. So if I was going through the Serial 9 catalog, based on what you said now, I'd be doing the upper control arms, mm-hmm. probably trying to get one of the 1 in 100 steering wheels, mm-hmm. AK-49, mm-hmm. and then some like... Either... Maintenance things. Well, but that's not in your catalog. I, sorry, I yeah, genuinely, I genuinely thought we were talking about you. Because, like, if you're just talking about, like, the general guy, then... Yeah, I am the general guy. Me and the general guy are one and the same. <laughs> I am the everyman. Yeah. We do have maintenance things. Like, if you have a JZX or an IS, we have um, the front lower control arm bushings, the rack bushings, the tension rod bushings. Uh, we also have an assortment of rear bushings. Like, uh, even if you have the full rear serial nine arm set, we you will not have... Uh, the bushing that goes in the knuckle, both for the control, like lower control arm and the traction rod, we have both of those um, to sort of complete everything. They're all in polyurethane. All right. Yeah. So I do that, and then my car is real good. Yeah, basically every man everything. Will be, the every man will be real yeah. stoked. Basically touch every aspect of your suspension and make Just it new. Just put everything new. in from oh. the catalog. But that's not true because you've talked to guys, you have friends that are like, I want everything, and you're like, that? X, Y, and Z doesn't make sense, but like there are. Yeah, I mean, it's not necessary for every person. One thing also that's kind of new that we're going to probably do, we've been talking about it for a long time. We don't know exactly how it's going to go, but we, out of every product we make, we have a certain amount allotted that are not anodized. Um, So it will be possible in the future for you to get your whole car. Like if you were to do, like if you were Joe Schmo and you wanted to buy every serial nine part, you could probably buy it not in green, but like it's going to be very limited and and probably cost more. But let's say you wanted every serial nine part to be purple. Um, we were kind of doing a thing where maybe you'd just buy a package. We would release like, you know, once or twice a year, we would release basically drop like a full purple, like IS 300 pack or something like that. Oh, like a goodie box. Sort of. I but guess. Like, yeah, yeah, not at all like a goodie ball. <laughs> it would be fun like a very limited nine. drop, like you know what I mean. Yeah, like yeah. so, like if you had a full purple serial nine car, like all the components, especially with the billet arms and stuff, like that's like a thing. You can't just buy that. Ooh, like, it's like sneakers. You're like yeah, it's like sneakers. That yeah, point. exactly. Yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. So the biggest takeaway, other than all the parts to buy, <laughs> is that we're gonna go to every two weeks. Yes. For the podcast because this one is going to take two weeks to edit and uh yeah so again thanks for everyone who's listened to the podcast yes and please thank you so much everybody for joining us and and listening to us talk a bunch of randomness (laughs) yeah uh, we really really appreciate the kind words and props and stuff also, you can tell us if we suck. That might be also. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, sure. I, we could appreciate the constructive criticism. There's someone will tell me that I suck. Just me. Ryan sucks. <laughs> Someone's going to say Gerard's an arrogant prick. Well, I mean, 
not in those words. I've had people that have listened to it that don't know you that are like, Gerard seems like I'm like, yeah, but you don't really know Gerard. Seems like what? What is it? What is it? What are the? It was like uh, they used the word pract, and I didn't know what it meant. Pract. Yeah. Like a British, like a, a British pract term. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and then I was like, I kind of explained it. I was like, yeah, but you got to understand, like. Gerard didn't believe in himself. I don't think this would work. <laughs> yeah. None yeah. of this works if Gerard doesn't believe in Gerard. <laughs> I feel like that's like every business, though. You know? It is, yeah. totally. McDonald's, McDonald's doesn't work if McDonald's doesn't believe in McDonald's, you know? Yeah, yeah. We've it's literally not- been told by professionals that, like, this isn't going to work. So it's like- yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and I totally get it. Because, like, I, and then, like, I look at Dota Logic, I'm like, of course Dota Logic didn't work. I'm super self-deprecating and like, <laughs> and like doesn't work when you're like yeah it's fine like my shit's okay like, that's literally like your word it's like it's fine i'm yeah, fine it's fine <laughs> it's fine i'm fine it's fine i feel like it's like a bit of a a, a, a bit of a juxtaposition to that though as well because it's like you know you're like oh it's fine and Gerard's like it's never fine you know what i mean it's, yeah it's, it's never good enough and it's, yeah uh, like so, it's not like he's out there like being like boastful and arrogant about his shit. He he always just thinks his shit isn't good enough, you know. Yeah, well, but no, think... today he did say that like he's up here and everyone else is down here. I just <laughs> and then we than... also have made the category of like, or the the different like the thing where Gerard sits on the throne and you have to go to people. <laughs> to, like there is, there is a persona. That is, I think, attached. <laughs> I think, and I mean, I like to, I like to put things in boxes for sure. But when you listen to the podcast, there is a persona that's attached to each of us, and one of the things is, is like Gerard fully believes in what he's doing. He also believes in the things that he's done, and like I think it's none is as clear as when we talked about like things that you regret and Gerard was like in that episode we couldn't get him to be like I regret nothing. doing this it was like I regret nothing I don't build weak ass shit you know and it was just kind of like all right cool and that that's actually been like my big takeaway is like oh yeah like just if you don't believe in yourself and what you're doing then nobody else is so yes but it's hard yeah, to adapt that statement it's a hard thing to adapt to your life. So I can teach you how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just okay. Maybe maybe, maybe that should be our next video series. Ooh, how to be more like Gerard. <laughs> no, just like self Gerard self confidence tips. Yeah, Gerard self confidence is a whole other thing. I've actually said like I was like I there's a part of me that for a while worried that doing these podcasts I was like. I don't want to cast either of you guys in a negative light. And then I was like worried. I was like, am I doing that? Is that what's happening? But then I realized it wasn't. Uh, it's good. I mean, it's, we're real. This is, this is who this we is, are. You right? are who you are. And I appreciate it. And I think yeah. other people appreciate it as well. All right. Cool, man. Well, thank you very one, much. One, one thing I will say though, that it kind of like, I mean, I don't really feel like we're anybody or anything, but like, it does feel that like in the current age, the more you put yourself out there, the more you talk into the ether, if you will, the more someone can come back, take that, what you said and be like, Oh, like, not nah, this person not anymore you know but i mean that's a thing right like you, you got to put yourself out there and i mean if that's yeah, exactly. if that's the yeah, way you yeah. talk and that's what you talk about then some people no, will like you no, some people yeah, won't dude. i think there's enough here to like make an episode <laughs> so uh thanks again for everyone who's uh listened again we're gonna switch it to every two weeks so we're gonna go away for a little bit but not entirely and please i can't express this enough don't hesitate to reach out to any of us if you have anything you want us to chat about, we will try. Like uh, we've made episodes out of some pretty ridiculous shit. So yo, one thing we've never said is, I mean, I'm sure most people know, but what's your Instagram? Me? Yeah. Oh, so all the car related stuff is at Dota Logic, but then if you want to follow just me drinking beer and then my car, and then my daughter, it's at Dodo Ryan D. Yeah, and Kevin, it's pretty obvious. It's at Kevin underscore Cyril nine, right? Yep, that's me. Yeah, and I, my, the business account, and I guess the main Cyril nine account is at Cyril nine. That's me. Um, but my personal account is, I think it's Gerard Cyril nine or Cyril nine Gerard underscore. Isn't it G? Isn't it just G Cyril nine? 
zero nine underscore G. Yeah, that's it. I think that's, that's what it is. One. You don't even know. I don't, know. I don't, I don't even. Know. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, reach out to any of those, and if you have questions, we'll yeah. lob them across the plate, and we'll try to hit a dinger. All, All right. right. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. See you guys. Thanks for listening to Serial Podcast Nine.